Well, welcome back to End Time Generation. I am your host, uh, Brother Ayers, and I have with me Gary Gates from Not So Random Act of Kindness. Brother, want to introduce yourself? Well, yes, sir. It's good to be with you. Uh, we've done a few things with some other uh, people online, so it's good to see you again. Um, basically, it's like this. You know, I believe that, you know, we are supposed to be spreading kindness right here in the final hour. And each thing you do for someone else in the name of Jesus, you know, it could be our very last uh, act on this earth. And it's very humbling to to think about that at times. And, uh, you know, I, I like to follow a lot of different people online and and uh, see what different people are talking about as far as, you know, the headlines of today, of today and where we're at in the in the timeline of things and how far along are we into what many consider in times and uh, you you follow that and then you're like okay lord what am i supposed to do in the meantime well you know there is a prize for us that are looking up waiting his return and that that goes without saying but i i do want to be found faithful if the lord does in fact come even even, even today even before, before we're done talking and uh, so that's what we're all about it, not so random. When you do stuff in Jesus' name and he gives you direction, there's nothing random about that act of kindness. It's uh, not so random. And, you know, living in here in Flint, I've noticed that, I don't know if it's maybe just in Flint or if it's everywhere, but people are, they, always, they look so, like, they're angry and they're in a constant hurry and everybody's like quick to snap at somebody they mm -hmm. are quick to yell at you if you you know you're driving or something everybody just seems like they're on edge and you know i've noticed like when you do something kind for someone like even open the door at the grocery store you know what i mean mm -hmm. that goes mm -hmm. a long way and i noticed like the other day i opened a uh at the grocery store, I opened the door for an elderly person and they were shocked that someone, yeah. someone much younger than them would actually take the time and be considerate and think of them. Mm -hmm. And to them, it just, it's like, it, it's just something that they're not used to. And you can tell they're not used to uh, stuff like that happening in the, in the world that we live today. Yeah. Uh, what I found is, you know, especially uh, wait staff at a restaurant or like in the grocery stores, just helping random people and stuff. Uh, uh, I don't know what it is. I'm sure you get this too. When you're, when you're a big guy, tall guy, whatever, you know, there's a top shelf somewhere and a little old lady waiting on you, you know, to, 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 to like, Hey, get that. Or, Hey, get that big thing down there. I'm, I'm too scrawny to get, you know? So there's always a, uh, you're being set up to help you know, and, uh, but like with wait staff and stuff, especially at, during and after the pandemic, you go into a restaurant, it's not as full as it used to be on a, on a Friday night or whatever, or, or even after church sometimes, you know, not be packed and take a time to bless and, and speak to your wait, waiter or waitress and, and bless them. And, and I mean, it does, it takes them back. It really takes them back. And, uh, and, uh, it opens the door I found for, for witnessing. It's like what I call reverse witnessing because mm -hmm. you do something like that and, and you trust God with that. And next thing you know, they're asking you, well, what, what do you believe? Where do you go to church? What, what exactly, you know, and uh, they might even have a Bible question that's been, you know, stumping them that they're trying to figure out. It's, it's really awesome, you know, so. Well, you know, also it's so easy to judge people, you know, just by what they look like or, you know, that's just as humans, we do that. We prejudge oh, yeah. people and you never know what somebody's going through at that moment. I mean, someone has a bad attitude. Like I was saying, everybody looks like they're upset and they're just, you know, waiting to be offended. But you don't know what that person has gone through that day. They may have lost someone or they may have gotten oh, yeah. a really bad fight or gotten fired. And, you know, I like the name of your channel because going beyond, like Jesus said, you know, if someone asks you to go a mile, go with them too. Yeah. You know, it's just doing that random act of kindness that yeah. in today's world, it, it's just, it's not normal. And yeah. when people are used to 
you know, cutting people down because we've been programmed like through either oh, TV yeah. sitcoms where every TV sitcom is designed to get you to laugh at insults, insulting one another, tearing down. Mm -hmm. And so when you go against this world system by doing something kind, they don't know how to take it. And, you know, we're practically the only Bible really that people will ever read our action, what we do. That, that that will preach brother that that'll preach right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm right there with you. Because uh, those those scriptures you're talking about, I mean, go with him two miles, turn the other cheek. All the, we kind of like want to like blah, 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 speed read that part and then get to something we really like, you know. Uh, yeah. But that those hard little things like that, I mean, that's that's some of the hardest preaching I think in the Bible. I mean, uh, I don't know kindness sometimes. I mean, you you could probably get off drugs and get off alcohol quicker than you can to just love your fellow man (laughs) right and the thing is is you know what we're going to get into end times but the thing is is the reason why a lot of people don't touch this topic and they don't want to touch on this topic because they think it's unnecessary because well why do i need to act right why do i need to act holy i mean once Mm -hmm. saved always saved i don't need to change you know i can just still live however i want and just go out about my business and i don't have to be considerate towards your feelings, but that's not what Mm -hmm. Jesus said. You know, Jesus said, and he he said that, you know, this is how they shall know you are my disciple. If you have love one to another. Now he's not talking about just your brother and the Lord. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the sinner. He's talking about the person who doesn't know God, the person who's across from you pumping gas at the gas station or behind you in the line of subway. Those are the people he wants you to do something for pick up their tab or you know pump their gas or do something and you know i do i like this topic uh of your channel that you 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 talk about not so random acts of kindness is because we don't see a lot of that Mm -hmm. and that's something that we as the church needs to get back to we need to get back to uh preferring the brethren you know and we don't do that we're always in competition but if we can prefer the brethren i think that's what God wants us to do. Mm-hmm. I believe it. And probably about February or March, I started to do a few videos, uh, kind of highlighting, you know, watch women, watch men that are out there that are talking and warning people, Hey, Jesus is getting ready to come back. I mean, mm-hmm. a lot of things going on in the world, a lot of things pointing to it. And here's why I did one video just highlighting some of these people. And uh, not really looking into them thoroughly, getting a big background check, not probably properly vetting them, let's say, but just mentioning a few people and saying, hey, there's people like this that are out there, you know, taking of their time uh, on YouTube and, and various social media platforms and talking about, you know, here's what's happening in the world. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of highlighted them as, hey, <laughs> this is a great act of kindness to be a watchman on the wall. And that video got more views than anything else I put up, you know, at that time. And I'm like, what is it? You know, you, you go on here and you talk about be good to your fellow man. And it's like, uh, you know, you and your three cousins are watching it. Your wife might watch it maybe, you know, haha. And you don't, you don't get anybody to watch it, but then you start talking about, Hey, the world might end tomorrow. And all of a sudden everybody wants to tune in just to watch it burn. And, and, uh, I don't understand it. So I kind of, try to balance back and forth and do a little bit of everything. And Mm -hmm. uh, so I do get a little bit more on the second part of that. I get more random, you know, (laughs) you know, having a little bit of flavor, a little bit variety. And, you know, if me and my wife screw up, we'll, we'll put that in the blooper reel, make me at least spread a little kindness, if anything, you know, (laughs) I just, I just think people have forgotten how to be kind. And, you know, and if you don't have the spirit of God within you, if you're not a Christian, then it doesn't come natural. Because, see, when you're born again, you're a new creature. You don't think like you used to. You don't act Mm -hmm. the way you used to. And when you are born again, you want to be more like him. And, you know, you want to have the Beatitudes. You want to, you know, resemble the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, you know, temperance and those things. And But if you put them into action, you can win a lot of people. You can reach yeah. the people 
that you never thought you would be able to reach just by being kind. And you know? I'll, t- I'll tell you right along with that point. And you said it a second ago. I mean, you know, when God gives you a vision for something, hey, you're going to go eat tonight and you're kind of in a pra- state of prayer and you're like, Lord, give me a deserved waiter or waitress tonight. And mm-hmm. I pray that that's the one out of all of them that's really needing this. And, you know, and there's been a lot of times I'll go with a, like a preconceived idea that, yeah, God's going to bless that little, uh, you know, five foot tall little little waitress that's, you know, getting ready to have a baby tonight. <laughs> you know, get ready to pop. And, uh, you know, you could just tell that probably in a, in a tough situation, because here they are, you know, waitressing at nine months pregnant, you know, the the finances are probably needing a lot of help. Got a baby coming. You're already kind of thinking in the back of your mind, who's the most deserving, but then Mm -hmm. God gives you somebody and, and not talking about anybody that has them, but you know, like, they're all tattooed up and don't don't look like a, a church goer and they, they you know and then you start to judge the situation like lord uh i think you sat us in the wrong section you know because this person apparently just looks like they come off of a rock and roll weekend or something and it ends up being that person and then right. you you do what you're supposed to do and you bless and, and a lot of times it ain't really necessarily about the money it's just acknowledging people mm-hmm. being kind to people you right. know not really trying to just slip out your gospel track and 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 try to preach hellfire and brimstone through to down to everybody you meet but just just showing compassion and being jovial and happy with with somebody and uh you know, a lot of times, even if I don't have a lot of money to leave as a tip, and I try to, if I if I can't, if I don't have a good, you know, tip, I usually don't try to go out to eat. I'll, I'll get carry out or something else or cook at home for once. But uh, but I always keep that in mind because you know that's part of it. You know, and without fail, that person will be like, "Are you are you for real?" You know, and mm-hmm. and then they're, you know, they start opening the door on their own about who you are and what you are. And then later to find out that guy that looks like a drunk or looks, you know, rough, you know, Mm -hmm. ends up having the the most tenderest heart and be like, Hey, I just come out of uh, a bad life. And uh, as you can see, I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't look like somebody you want to bring home to your daughter, you know? And, but I just recently gave my heart to Jesus and I've had the worst time trying to, you know, find people to really communicate with, but I really appreciate y'all doing this. You know, I'll look this up, you know, and all that. Mm -hmm. And it ends up being, if you really kind of looking back at God, I'm sure he's looking at me like, you got a lot to learn, Gary, you know, and I'm thinking, Lord, that was the right person, you know, because we judge people, you know, we do built that way. It's horrible. It's we we're built that way. And Mm -hmm. without fail, that's that's the situation that'll happen you know god will send me people and i'm thinking lord you know and i, I just stopped asking and just do it you know right because being slow to obey is just as much disobedience as it would be to just say heck no god and go on right and uh, we don't need to be in that we need to be quick to do for our fellow man absolutely you know when i when i used to believe in a post-trib i used to get so angry at people who believed in a pre-trib and this is why and it was because i thought to myself you know you're wanting the rapture to happen at any moment right now but yet there's so many people that are lost you know i what about your unsaved loved ones because everybody's got unsaved loved ones i do i have i have a daughter who's you know a backslider and i have friends that don't know god and I used to get so upset because mm-hmm. they want an imminent rapture and I want to kick the can down the road so that way people have time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, but the thing is, is I noticed that and where I'm going with this is the pre-trib that I believe in now. OK, it's motivated me more to witness to people, to treat people differently, to try to make sure that. I'm being an example, not just behind closed doors. You know what I'm saying? 
but in public everywhere I go trying to be consistent because that one random act of kindness, it goes a long way and you can actually change someone's life. Now I've heard, you know, testimonies of evangelists at have in a restaurant witness to the race of the waitress having a bad day. She just breaks down and starts crying. And next thing you know, this girl gets saved in the restaurant and then she brings her family and they come wow. to church. You know, mm -hmm. we can't be so quick to want to leave here that we forgive, forget that there's still people that don't know the Lord. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And that, I guess uh, that's what I'm trying to say is that, you know, there are every day we come in contact with so many people that don't know God that are going to spend eternity mm -hmm. in a devil's hell, a hell that was not meant for them. And here we are saved, born again on our way to heaven and how many people do we just pass by how many people wow. do we not say hey jesus loves you and it only takes a few minutes it only takes a few seconds yeah you know i was at the grocery store and i was trying to you know get better at this lady bought a uh a lottery ticket and i thought to myself well you know that lottery ticket isn't gonna do nothing for you so i gave her a church card and i said you know i could I can't, you know, guarantee you you're going to get a million dollars with that card, but I can, you know, give you something better than that lottery ticket. Here's a church card. Come to church. You know, I can offer you eternal life. You yeah. know, it was an open door. And I guess what I'm trying to say is look for the open doors. Don't be so quick to, you know, come Lord Jesus. He will come in his time. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a set time when the rapture will take place. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's coming. But in the meantime, let's not be so focused with their head in the clouds looking up waiting on the lord that we forget to reach out to the people while we still have the moment you know what i mean oh yeah uh, i mean even with what we do uh brother i mean doing these videos and stuff and i've talked to you a couple of times about you know what do you what do you do with these knuckleheads to get on there and comment and stuff and you know yesterday morning you know uh, every morning my wife will do a scripture and we have those go out as a little short on YouTube and other social media. Well, anyway, all she did was read a verse. She didn't put in her opinion. Mm -hmm. She didn't have an attitude. She just read a verse, you know. Well, we had a person comment, and this was yesterday morning, and I, and I, I saw it, and then it, it, when my wife was eating, we were eating lunch, I, I, I replied, and then we ended up getting a response. But this person says this, Religion is the reason for war. Please stop, guys. I'm like, well, so I put on there, kind of siding with them a little bit, let you know, give them a little inch there. But I said, so true. Religion is the reason for war many times, and it is. I mean, you know, yeah, you got one group of religious folk going against another religious folk, you know, that's why they call these things holy wars, you know what I'm saying? But I put, yes, religion is the reason for war many times this statement can be can be so true at times i don't have religion i have jesus my friend jesus died for me and he died for you too he is a god of love and gave us a way to get to heaven and not to hell a belief in him is based on a direct relationship full of benefits i will not stop sharing his love for you I pray Jesus will touch your life like he did mine and God radically save you like he even did with Saul in the New Testament. Saul killed Christians and God radically saved him, changed his name to Paul. Paul went on to do a great work for the cause of God, for the cause of Christ. God could turn anybody around. Thanks for watching. And your comment, comments, good or bad, keep this video alive, brings us to many more people. Thanks for advancing his message. I thought for sure he is going to blast me you know, or, or her could have been a girl. Not too long after that, they, they put in there, not so random. Oh, that was such a heartwarming answer. Thanks. And a great big smiley face. Now they could have been a smart aleck even with that, but I don't think so. I mean, they didn't have no fight left in them after that. And I'm thinking, I think I told you and I've told others, if they have enough gall to go on a Christian channel and want to go in the comments and blast it. I look at them as they, they're coming right to the edge of glory and wanting to throw rocks 
But the thing is, they've come that close to glory, right. and they're wanting to, they want, you know, they're just coming. Why well, come all the way over here just to spit in the face of God? You know, and 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 you know, they there has to be some seeking in there, mm -hmm. you know. And he might have just been like, okay, if this guy pretty much cusses me out, you know, back out, you know, I don't know where he stands, but. You come right. with, with with love and a sternness and, uh, you know, not wavering, you know, well, you're right. I'm going to take my verses down, you know. I mean, what do they expect me to say? But he came back with that, and I was like, wow, you know. Yeah, I was already ready. Like, if he fought, I'd be like, hey, we can do this all day long. More comments on a video, more, you know, <laughs> emotion being put up right. or taken down. I mean, you know, hey. You know, there's my thumbs up. Um, you're just you're just advancing the kingdom, you know, going on these sites and, and blasting them a new one. I mean, hey, go right ahead. We, we welcome it. <laughs> well, the Bible says a soft answer turneth away wrath, you know, and be swift to hear and slow to speak sometimes. And that's what we got to do. And it's hard when you're, you know, oh, yeah. reading comments. But, you know, what we have been talking about for the last 20 minutes, people may not realize but it is a sign of the end time. The love yeah. of any show wax cold. Yeah. And that's what we're seeing. You know, yes, it's not, we're maybe not be talking at this moment about wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes in diverse places and the things that are coming upon the earth. But we got to remember there are other signs that we can't overlook. Oh, yeah. And one of the end time signs is the love of many show wax cold. And that's exactly what we're seeing. And that's exactly what we're talking about here is being long suffering, being patient, mm -hmm. you know, reaching out to those that nobody wants because nobody wants these people. Nobody wants, you know, the woke or they don't want the, the, the homosexual. They don't want the, the homeless man. They don't, they don't want those people. They, they just brush them off as, you know, a lost cause, but that's mm -hmm. not what God called us to do. If you reach the people nobody wants, God will give you the people everybody wants. Wow. Come on now. And, and that's uh, the thing okay. is we got to get the mind of Christ. He sat with the publicans and the sinners. He got down on their level. He washed their feet. Are we greater than him? No. Wow. He's called us to serve. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of people don't realize, but ministry means to serve. You put yourself at the feet Okay, you're not the head. Jesus is the head. But to be a minister, you must be called to serve. And that doesn't necessarily mean someone already in the church. That means someone who don't look like you, someone who don't think like you. You know yeah. what I mean? And oh, yeah. that's one of the signs of the end time generation, the coldness of people and that's what I'm seeing, not not just all over the news, but everywhere you go. I mean, in my neighborhood, you know, people are dying left and right. They're shooting each other. They're killing each other over ten dollars, over yeah. ten dollars, blowing someone away over ten dollars. Life in prison. I've seen yeah. countless murders. I mean, the police in my neighborhood and the ambulances is just becoming the norm. It's because people have such a hatred in their heart and they don't know why. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, why I think it's so important that we do these random acts of kindness. And uh, yeah. it kind of reminds me, well, of uh, second Timothy chapter three, where it lists all the things that's going to happen in the last days, perilous times will come, but then what does it get into? You know, that men will be lovers of them, the their own self. Be covetous, mm -hmm. boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, and pretty much everybody else. Unthankful, yeah. unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false yeah. accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are that are good. You know, right. it's what we were just talking about. Yeah. Traitors, uh, high-minded. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it lists all that, but of course... We always want to go to the juicier stuff like, OK, you know, about the earthquakes and the, all the different things that we're seeing in the news, you know. But I mean, uh, there's something behind why a student would want to, 
yeah, they've been they've been handed a great opportunity to go to even have the chance to even go to a what we call prestigious school, right. and they want to spend their time out in the elements in a tent, you know, fighting people over something that's across the globe in a in a land that they never they barely even heard of, you know. There there has to be something behind that because you know uh, a regular person just doesn't want to spend their time in a tent, you know fussing for people that you know it, it ain't like that's your family you know what i mean and well, uh you know I, I think a lot of it comes down to is the kids who partake in those uh you know riots or the protests they want to belong there's an emptiness in them to fill that, that they look everywhere to fill this void if it's you know mm -hmm. friends or drugs or you know video games or or whatever it is they just want a sense of belonging. Maybe they don't have a yeah. father in the home, or maybe you know they don't have their their relationships with their you know siblings aren't that good. So they'll go join a gang, or they'll join these protests, yeah. and they'll join these things, looking for love in all the wrong places. So that you know the very thing that they're running from, they're searching for, which is God. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they don't know that only God can fill that void. So they join these things and. They believe that, you know, it's for a good cause, mm -hmm. but what they're searching for, they're never going to find it. Yeah. Unless you they know, get the it, right, it, it, right. And it's hard. It's, I, I could just imagine it's hard to tell somebody that because, you right. know, here they are in the moment. I'm sure there's a rush of adrenaline. You know, you're doing something that's, you know, you got police that can come in at any time. You got all this all this craziness that could happen at any time you can get shot doing what you're doing i mean there's this rush you know and uh, but at the end of the day you know what do you have you know and mm -hmm. they think that that void is going to be filled with just go to the next rush whatever it is you know yeah. and my thing is this i mean there's a lot of good causes out there you know from you know uh, stuff to do to do with children stuff to do with little animals i mean there's all sorts of good good little causes you, a person could be involved in but god's told me this you know the only cause we really need to be getting fully invested in is the cause of christ and guess what that allows you to do that allows you to do the good deeds and, the, and all this for the humanity and to help humanity i mean he mm -hmm. just didn't come just to get with 12 guys and walk around and have you know some preaching conventions, you right. know, and, and feed 5,000, do a few good miracles, die, resurrect, call it, you know, call that my life. No, he, he came and had compassion and, and to the least of these, you know, and I mean, uh, the 12 disciples, you know, yeah, they look real nice and cleaned up in these movies, but I mean, a couple of them, a lot of roughnecks and, and rejects and, you know, I mean, good night. Nobody liked a tax collector. You put them on your staff, you know, I mean, you know, <laughs> he, you know, he, he took the impossible and made something possible out of it, you know, and it's just right. definitely like that verse says in the Bible where, to, you know, take the foolish things to compound the wise. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had the wise walking around right behind him, just scratching their head like, right. why are you doing this? And why are you doing that? They couldn't make heads or tails of it because this guy came, Jesus, and, and totally flipped the, the world upside down and shook it you know and you know the thing is is it wasn't what jesus said that brought the crowds because when he said eat my flesh and drink my blood he had the world's uh biggest church split in history you know those people he was telling were the ones he just got done feeding them with the five loaves and few fishes five thousand yeah. men not including women and children so there was roughly around thirty thousand people sitting there mm -hmm. eating of the miracle that he just performed and then when he started saying eat my flesh and drink my blood the church split <laughs> they didn't want nothing to do with it and then yeah. he even looked down to the 12 and said are you going to go but the thing is is what attracted the people to jesus is what he had compassion he met mm -hmm. their need and that you know wow we got to get back to meeting their need having compassion making a difference what did jesus say you know he said go ye into mm -hmm. all the world and preach and we're forgetting about our part of the bargain here you know right i mean yes we need to be looking up and and there's a, a reward great reward for those who diligently seek him and are waiting for his you know return but 
we also got to be laboring, you know, Absolutely. you know, we got to be found faithful and busy until he comes. And yes, looking up and waiting. And, and, and because of that anticipation, it should make you want to do something. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, hey, he can come back in the next 20 minutes. I better go and, and, and do as much good as I can do in this whole world, you know. And uh, that may be the thing, like in Jude, that, you know, some have compassion, you know, you know, pulling them, yanking them out of that fire, you know, compelling them, you know, and all this. And uh, that's part of this is that you, you we need to be a witness, you know, and that's hard yeah. preaching. Like you said, no, a lot of people want to turn a deaf ear to that. But that is the message, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, if I got drastically, radically saved and all this you know, they're thinking, this is what they're thinking. If this person really did get radically changed and this is the answer, they'd be shouting it from the rooftops. They'd be going around town like the Blues Brothers with the big old speaker on the car, you know, telling yeah. the gospel, you know. And, uh, you know, there's a few of us that's crazy enough to do it and spend our Saturday night on a YouTube channel <laughs> trying to reach as many as we can. But uh, that's what God's called me to do, and I believe that's what he's called us all to do. You know, spread the kindness right here in the final hour.